from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's showtime. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866-WILL on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes. Hey, how you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm doing good. Long time listener, first time caller, big fan. Cool. So, here's my deal. I was going out with this girl. We were living together. I live down in San Diego. I'm headed up to L.A. And about six months ago, she told me that she wants some space. I find out that she's sleeping with her ex-boyfriend and had been cheating on me for like three months while we were living together. I have these pictures we took from a weekend in Vegas. And my friends keep telling me, they haven't seen them, but my friends keep telling me I should post them. I want to post them because, I, you know, I feel bad that she hurt me and I'm angry. But in the same aspect, I don't think it's a cool thing to do. What do you think? I wouldn't worry about whether it's a cool thing to do. I would worry about whether it's a smart thing to do uh, because you could get sued for doing that. Okay. I mean, would it be worth that? Yeah. I didn't think about that. That's a good point. I mean, if you get caught, <laughs> that could be expensive. Yeah. What would she sue me for? Slander? Invasion of privacy. Do you have a release for those photographs? Uh, no. They're, they're just on a digital camera. Yeah, so you don't have the right to post them anywhere. Right. And uh, now, what are the odds that she'll catch you? I don't know, but... You got to be pragmatic about this stuff. I am not a believer in getting revenge that way. Right. I am a believer. For example, if uh, if if I get uh, screwed over by a chick, the way I get back at them is to date a better chick, and to make sure they find out about it. Right. Would you date one of her best friends? Sure. Okay. That that might be a better solution for me. I think. Yeah. I mean, that uh, it's better than uh, taking a, li a risk that you're going to get sued. Yeah. What if, I, uh, what if I were to just call her and tell her that I found them? Do you think I could, uh, like, irritate her a little bit doing that? Or you Again, know, really, is it worth it? I, I know you think it is now, but long term. Yeah, long term, it's probably not worth it. No. It's not worth it. I don't do stuff like that. Just for the record, I don't. Yeah. Well... I've been listening to you for uh, for a long time. Had I been listening to you before I got married, I probably would not have gotten married and it would have been in a much better uh, both financial and emotional situation. But i got to tell you, every guy out there needs to listen to you and just needs to hear what you're saying because you know what you're talking about and you're successful for a reason. Thank you for that, Will. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Amy is in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Dad. How you doing, dear? Hi, Dad. Well, have you heard about Portland? Have I heard the, what about Portland? The big old scandal. But well, No, I haven't heard about a scandal. Tell me about the scandal. A big sex scandal with our mayor? No. Yes, he... um. Got elected, and uh, one of our news reporters here dug, dug up some dirt on him, and he denied it. And then it came out that it was an under underage guy, and he waited for him to turn eighteen. And now they're uh, trying to get him out of the office. Oh wait a minute! He waited till the kid was eighteen. Yeah. So what's the scandal? Well, he just lied about all this. He was asked about it when he was um, in the elections, and he denied it. Why is it anybody's business? <laughs> That's why I'm just, I don't know. I just wanted to let you, if, if you'd heard about it. Yeah, I mean, now I see here that it says, um, I'm taking a look at the story now, uh, and the lie that he told that I'd be more concerned about, it says that he lied during his campaign when he denied having sex in 2005 with a teenage male who was a legislative intern. Now, yeah. a legislative intern makes some difference there. Um, it says the newspaper sent in evidence showing otherwise, although it never reported details. Uh, now he says he did not have the sex with him until he was 18. But, yeah. 
But was so it, what did we find out if that uh, if that intern was eighteen or not? I believe he was. All right. Well, I'm not concerned about that. I am but, concerned about it being a legislative intern, but uh, yeah. you know, I mean, the, the, the let's be honest. Uh, this you have an openly gay mayor. Mm -hmm. I love it. By the way, his name is Sam Adams. Yes, <laughs> which is fantastic. I guess in Portland, when someone wants to have Sam Adams, it's a whole different uh, whole different ball game. They actually have a they have a uh, shirt company up here that said uh, is taking it and saying. Uh, Something about a logo that the best time in Oregon is to have a Sam Adams, you know, because it's a beer. <laughs> yes. And everybody's buying it. <laughs> I know. I know that for years Sam Adams had a hard time selling because of all the microbrews. I guess now uh, there's another way to have Sam Adams. Yeah, it's a, I just want to get your take on it. And like, well, but that's that's all I uh, that's all I could say. And again, if I were in the middle of it, I probably have more of an opinion about it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, I, uh, all I care about is whether or not somebody uh, broke the law Yeah. Uh, if they are running for mayor. And, and to be asking questions uh, about uh, uh, whether somebody had sex with somebody is, is irrelevant unless there's a specific law that was broken. Yeah. So I have, I have another question for you. This is off the subject, but um, have you ever had... Um Battle of the Sexes on your, your talk show? Well, that's pretty much what the show is. Oh, is it? Okay. No, you well, think? I haven't been listening too long, but I love it, and I I listen to it every day, and I just want to let you know it's awesome. Thank you. And you do know that Portland is the home of the other white bead, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for that, Amy. <laughs> Appreciate the call. See, that's that's new to her. If you haven't heard it, it's new to you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hey, hey, Tom. Um, I just got a story about my buddy. About over the summer, he uh, he got a Craigslist hooker, right? And uh, the stories were pretty cool. You know, he had fun. He's kind of he's overweight and smokes a lot of marijuana. Wait, so. so when you say he got a Craigslist hooker, did he pay to get a Craigslist hooker? Yeah, he he gave her uh, he gave her the the, the what, hundred fifty roses. 150 roses? Yeah, he gave her the donation. Wait, 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 wait. It wasn't literally 150 roses, was it? Uh, I don't know. That's what they asked for on the on the Craigslist arrival. Oh, they service. asked for 150, well, that's like asking for 150 smackers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, he, he, uh, she, she uh, made him his regular, and then uh, all of a sudden he uh, moved her in to his house. And oh, uh, Yeah, she's uh, been living there. And I, 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 t I try to tell him, we would get in arguments, I try to tell him um, that what you're doing is really dumb and you're breaking the rules and you can't make a hole into a housewife. But uh, this girl really got him by the balls. And um, he, we would get in arguments and a little spatter, so I wrote him uh, a nice little one-page letter about the reasons why I think he's uh, doing the wrong thing. And uh, I don't know, it's just funny, this, this woman, this girl's vagina is kind of ruining a 10-year uh, friendship. Uh, and I just want to let your callers know that... Um, are your listeners that um, the vagina is powerful and it, it can play minds with your friends and it's just a sad story. It's yeah, pretty bad. Well, it is. Uh, you know, again, uh, your friend obviously has no game if he has to move a hooker in with him. Yeah, he has. He has no game and he's he's doesn't has really no motivation. And he, he also he also moves her two puppies. Ah, 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 come on, we can't use those words on the air. Zero tolerance policy. You're out. <laughs> The S word is out. Out. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Sky on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. Uh, yeah, I've been listening to you about a year. Uh, gosh, and it's the you saved my life. Uh, I'm 30 years old. Uh, no girlfriend and not married, obviously. But uh, always, uh, always looking for uh, to build up my bullpen. So I wanted to thank you for that, number one. And uh, I just wanted to make a comment about, uh, you know, the L.A. and the situation with no football team. And, again, yeah, it, I just, it seems so absurd that the uh, second biggest sports market in, in the country does not have a team. You know, obviously, at least But you know why we don't have a team. Yeah, it's just absurd. Yeah, no one wants to put up the money to build a stadium, correct? Yeah, well, no, no, the taxpayers don't want to do it. But, and, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, why, like, and why should we? Yeah, that's 
That's very true. I agree with that. Yeah, because we have to pay for enough of it as it is to bail, make all these bailouts now and just to get by. But we got to I mean, pay for all the people who sue the police department. Uh, we got to pay for any lawsuits against the mayor when he's screwing around. I mean, come on. We got a lot of expenses here. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we're just trying to get by the skin of our teeth as it is. So, but I mean, uh, there is a lot of football fans here in Southern California, as we all know. And you know, at least we do have SC. Like USC is like kind of like my pro team to root for. Now, I grew up a Ram fan, and you know, it was nothing tar harder for me to root for them when they moved to St. Louis. So I had to pretend they just played every game away. But now, even that's lost its mystique. And because um, they you know, stink. The, the mystique, you know. If I, no, I, I said have, they stink. They, yeah, stink. they stink. They do stink. That's why you never. can't keep it up. See, see i got to tell you something. These uh, these 14 years that we haven't had a team here in uh, SoCal, uh -huh. um, all I ever did was I got direct TV. Right. And you can pick any team you like, and that can be your home team, and that's it. Because in reality, best case scenario, 90,000 people attend a game out of 11 million SoCal residents. 90,000. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we had teams here. How often did you actually go? Yeah, you know, yeah, when I, cause I grew up in the, uh, in the, in Mammoth, but my home away from home has always been Orange County, so I usually, when I could go with my grandfather or my father, go to, you know, go to Anaheim Stadium and see Ram games. How but many? I, two games my whole life. Two you know, games. That's and my I, point. And I'll never forget. As far as you I, know, they still play at Anaheim. Who, you wouldn't even know. Exactly, and the one time that I did go it was a Ram uh, Niner game in Anaheim, and uh, I think my uncle and I were like maybe a two of uh, maybe a thousand Ra actual Ram fans in our own stadium. The rest were all Niner fans, and it, you know it was just it just goes to show uh, you know how that was going to you know turn out. And uh, so but, I, yeah. think, I think you're starting to see some of the reasons why Southern California doesn't have an NFL team. Yeah, and not enough support. Even Does it really grow... make a difference? No. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice, but at least we do have, you know, we got UCLA and SC. To you know report. what I love? I love seeing all these illiterate cities on the East Coast, smaller towns, yeah. who take their entire budget for the next uh, 30 years. Absolutely. Police, fire, education, libraries. Yeah. Very important. And, and, yeah. and they want to be big league. We're going to be big league now. We're going to be big league. And they build this billion-dollar stadium. And, and meanwhile, the populace is uh, illiterate. And exactly. how much employment? Okay. How much employment do you get out of having eight home games a year? I mean, exactly. I mean who's smarter, us or them? Yeah, exactly. We are we are smarter because yeah, the more important things like education and uh, putting out fires, things that we need. You know, everybody needs. You know, that that would that would become before. You know, this, if uh, Jacksonville summer. wants to spend half a billion dollars to build a stadium, they should go for it. Yeah, let them let them do it. Jacksonville yeah. wouldn't be big league if they had five NFL teams in the same city. They would not be a big league city. So it doesn't yeah. really matter. You think LA is not a big league city? Oh, yeah, they're definitely a big league. L.A. is one of the world's major cities. Absolutely. And, and not for, having an NFL team doesn't make any difference at all. That's true. That's very true. It's just, you know, at least, like I said, at least we do have uh, some, you know, for, for big F, uh, football fans down here, at least we do have the, some high-quality uh, college football to watch at least. You know? Yes, we have. So that, that's, uh, that's just uh, my main point about that. And I just want to say thanks, man. You're awesome, Professor. And uh, could you take me out with a bong hit? Of course I can, Sky. Here you go. No cost. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. Here we are now with shorter commercial breaks, less commercials, more phone calls, taking them faster. Even you can get through. 1-800-5800-TOM. Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I was wondering, I'm calling about Ralph Nader. I mean, I just saw a documentary on him. And I was real, I mean, I'm a young guy, so I didn't really know too much about him. I just know he was this guy from the Green Party who wasn't getting nominated or nothing like that. But um, I didn't know that he's done more, I guess, for the average day person than any of these politicians have. So I was just wondering why he hasn't been nominated. I mean, well, he's been nominated. I mean, well, I, nominated I, my opinion yeah. about Ralph Nader, and I've interviewed Ralph Nader, I have spent time with Ralph Nader, 
right. and all these things about Ralph Nader. For example, it's Ralph Nader who's primarily responsible for seat belts in your car. Right. Uh, as an example. And airbags. And airbags. But uh, the, the bottom line on Ralph Nader is that, uh, you know, th that's what he did well. Right. Was, you know, but he created the whole field of consumer reporting, consumer advocacy. Uh, uh, that, that was Ralph Nader. But this idea of him getting into politics, yeah, I just think that this is somebody who got a lot of attention in the 60s, in the right. 70s, who just can't give up getting attention. Uh, but no one's ever going to pay any attention to him. Now, I, I mean, I understand that, but do you, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I voted for Obama, and I have no problem with him, but I honestly don't think it should be a two-party system. I'm tired of it. Well, I, I agree with that, but uh, and there's going to have to be somebody more compelling than Ralph Nader to get people to vote for one of the uh, alternative parties. Do you ever think a third party will rise up? Not in my lifetime. Yeah, I don't think so either. But hey, but hey, we... that's true. Could you take me out, Bill O'Reilly style, Tom? Yes, yes, I can. Thank you, sir. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Doing well, I'm great. Doing great today. Um, when you were talking about the NFL teams, I was wondering why you didn't bring up the San Diego Chargers for a Southern California team. They've been mentioned. Well, let's face it. There's like ten different NFL teams out of thirty-two. Is it thirty-two uh, that have been mentioned as a possibility to move to LA? Yeah, uh, well, I was thinking that it would probably be a better idea just to keep the money going through the schools and everything rather than just keep San Diego as a Southern California team. Well, as as we've been saying, uh, a developer named Ed Roski uh, just got bonds approved in the city of industry uh, to build a football stadium. The plans have already been drawn. There is already a model of the proposed stadium in existence. There's a website for it, by the way. Really? What's that website? I cannot remember the, uh, the the address of the website, but if you put Roski, R-O-S-K-I, and NFL, I'm sure it will come up. All uh, right, yeah, definitely. Google brings up everything. Right. And um, the other day, the city of industry uh, approved, if I recall correctly, was it $150 million in bonds uh, to build this uh, NFL stadium? Really? Yes. I did not... Please and that would be that. at the intersection of, I think, uh, was it the uh, 60 and the 605, or the, I think it's the 60 and the 605. Yeah, do you think they might bring the Detroit Lions down there? I don't know Are why. You... They've got uh, a brand new stadium. It's a couple of years old. Yeah, but I was figuring because of their terrible record, they might just want to move there and start a new career. Probably like you know, No, no, new... no. The teams that have been mentioned uh, over over the more recent uh, period of time would be, yes, the Chargers, because they can't get a new stadium in San Diego. San Diego's been broke for a while. Uh, the New Orleans Saints, they, of course, haven't had a new stadium uh, uh, since their existence. They've only played in one stadium. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, I think I've read that their the lease is going to be up sometime in the next couple of years, and they're not all that happy in Jacksonville. And the Minnesota Vikings, these are the teams I've heard yeah. as possibilities. Awesome. That's a, well, do you see you're supporting all this? I support the building of the stadium. I think it's uh, a fantastic location. I really do. Yeah, I believe that L.A. is one of the best cities and definitely would definitely bring a lot more people there and make it a bigger city. It Look, as really a taxpayer, awesome. I just don't want to pay for it. Yeah, it would bring a lot of money there, too. Well, then, then let the people who use it pay for it. Yeah. I don't want to hear people calling and complaining that beer is $15 when yeah. it happens. You know, a tough luck. Uh, the rest of us don't want to pay for that stadium. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if Ed Roski can get that built, and I think he can, he's one of the partners uh, in the company that put together Staples Center. Uh, if he can uh, get that done, I'm fully in support of it, very excited about it. I think everything about it looks great, the location, the plan, the drawings, the model, everything. It, it, it's been very well thought out as far as I can tell. Yes, yeah, definitely. Well, I, I completely support it, too. Can you take me out, uh, GFK style? Yes. Yes, I senior or junior? Um, senior, please. Senior. Here you go.
1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like a show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. And uh, that proposed NFL stadium uh, is proposed for the uh, the intersection of the sixty and the fifty seven freeways. I think it's fantastic. Get it done. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. The Tom like a show now with shorter commercial breaks. Less commercials. And on top of that, we take more calls. We take them faster. Even you can get in at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Son, how are you? How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing perfect, man. First time caller, long time listener. That's all I can say, man. Yeah. But I, I think I got a solution on this whole bailout thing, man. I think it's uh, cannabis, medical marijuana, dude. It's a billion dollar street industry. I'm serious, Tom. It's a billion dollar industry here, and each, each month. But look, I mean, look, uh, you know what? Let's say you're right. It's a billion dollar industry. Let's say, forget about tax. You let's say the whole proceeds go to the the, the federal government. One yeah. billion dollars right now is not a drop of the bucket. Right now, Obama is proposing to spend one trillion dollars. We will have a deficit of over a trillion dollars. Oh, yeah, don't get me wrong about so, that. A billion, a billion isn't going to make that much difference. Oh, no, I know that, but still. I'm in favor, look, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm in favor of legalized pot. I'm in favor of taxing pot. I'm in favor of all of it, but I don't think it's going to solve any problems. No, I'm not saying it's going to solve everyone's problems, but it'll solve most of these people's problems, though. It'll mean I can buy pot at Costco and get, like, a pallet of it and save some money. You might as well buy in bulk, though, all I'm saying. Right. But, but still, all I'm saying is like you know, it will give back to America, dude. That's what I'm trying to do. I love my, I love America. Is all I'm saying. So you I'd would like be smoking that. pot as your patriotic duty. Exactly. Well, what do you think the Declaration of Independence was made out of? It's hemp paper, man. Well, to, to try smoking it. James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how are you, brother? Great. I want to call. I'm. I have a big, uh, a big dilemma. I work with all women. Um, I'm. I'm. In, I work in a hospital. Um, I'm in the military. But um, I was uh, I want I love I love my job, but I was put into a work section where I had no I couldn't pick where I work, but I was put in this work section. I work with all women, all right. I literally I work with like 25 girls. Um, there's one other guy I work with. I love my job, but Tom, I work with all women for the first five minutes. I'm like, this is gonna be dope, you know. I work with all girls, but now I've been a year in this job, and it's it's wearing me down. Tom, I'm I'm getting I'm hearing all these dilemmas, these girls. Um, I'm getting literally fed up. Like I can't speak up. I can't say anything. Like you know, shut the. You know, I can't, I'm not going to cuss on your radio show, but I can't speak my mind because I'm going to hear from it from my supervisors or whatnot. What do I do? What do I do? Well, you can quit. I'm, I'm military. I mean, it, I can't quit. I'm I'm contracted and I love my job. It's not. I'm not going to let these broads make me quit my job. I mean, I hear what you're saying. Well, but... then you can make a note of what offends you and bring it to the authorities and make your complaints, uh, sexual harassment, whatever. <laughs> you're right. I could lie and make sexual harassment comments. No, I, I um, thought that's what you were referring to. No, it's not. It's not are they like... talking about, uh, are they having graphic conversations about sex? It's, yeah. It's oh, sex. I complain it's... about it guy bashing and if i speak up then i'm a jerk well go you know? well, by the way that's exactly the kind of thing you can file a complaint about so do it that's good that's good is there any others i mean besides going that's like, the that look when you're in a militaristic environment you go through channels you follow the chain i would feel like a i would feel like a punk though you know what i'm trying to say like so, I, I don't know look, i know, well, I know well, you're saying about going at like legal action and you know taking it up like hierarchies and chain of command but I would also feel like I'm punking out, like I'm tattletailing and well, you know, but, being a. You know what? You're dealing with women. You have to fight fire with fire. True, true. I mean, and then I was exactly. You know, I just didn't know. I was trying to get your opinion on it, and you're always. Well, you, always you didn't have to try very hard. I gave it to you immediately. Yeah, you, well, you always give really good advice. I'm going to do that. All I was right. thinking about. I was trying not to like stay away from. You know. So, uh, 
I was trying to stay away from my Anything and, you do, uh, if you tried to do something, it could get you in trouble. Yeah. That's your, this I mean, is how was, you get them in trouble and not you. Yeah. I was thinking about going about, this is what I want to do. What, this is what I want to do is just tell them, like, shut the hell up. But you can't, you know? so you have to follow channels. No. Thanks, Brother Tom. You're, you always give great advice. Can you take me out travel style? Yes. With a bong hit? Yes, we can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yo, Tom. How's it going? Okay. Hey, uh, long time listener, and I value your opinion to the All highest right. degree. So I just wanted to get your opinion on something. Okay. All right. Uh, have you seen a video called Loose Change? No. It's on YouTube. No. No. All right. Well, I don't watch documentaries on YouTube. Well, it's like an hour and a half long. It's a decent little one. It, it might interest you if you check it out or do some research on it if you ever feel like it. <laughs> uh, Stay away from all of that. Okay, you most you pretty much just don't even get into that stuff. No, because uh, again, the, all these conspiracy theories, none of them have ever been proven ever, ever. This one's interesting. It's more scientific than just theoretical. Really? Who is the scientist? Oh uh, no, they just they just use like uh, you and know. There's the nothing scientific about it. They use like uh, uh, they basically use like equations and uh, temperatures and things like that to prove like you know buildings can't melt and whatnot. You know, I've heard all of this before. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, let's face facts: the World Trade Center collapsed. It was uh, attacked by two airplanes. Uh, you know that. What, what more can I say? Yeah, you know, it yeah. would be a it would be a very very complicated and long-term proposition to be like you're putting up Christmas lights, to be putting 110 stories of explosives into the World Trade Center without being detected. Yeah, that, that would be extremely difficult. I think, I, it's high, that. I think it's much more likely that a plane slammed into the World Trade Center and the two towers collapsed than that they let a bunch of Arabic-looking guys get into the stairways of the World Trade Center, and they spent how many months installing explosives? <laughs> Come on! Well, they, they actually they don't talk about Arabic people doing it. They whoever, oh, like George Bush, a... whoever. I mean, <laughs> the point is, can, can, can you do you really believe? Do you, honestly, and give me an honest answer. Do you really believe, with all the security cameras, with all the cops? Uh, and all the time it would take. Do you really think that somebody could uh, engage in a project like that for months or years and never be detected? No. That's I my don't. point. So wh That's why like why waste my time watching a documentary based on that theory? <laughs> it just brings up a lot, like more than more than just a couple valid things. That, that no, it doesn't because good. that's highly unlikely. Yeah, it, it it is highly unlikely. It's un it's, it's unheard of. It's just, it's I also just, find it highly thing. unlikely that there wouldn't be a single scientist in the United States government who would bring it up. No, there, there's a, there was quite a few scientists on that, that are on the documentary. Did any of them work uh, for the United States government? No, no, they don't work for the government. Right. They, they're just you know their own opinion, obviously, and what they believe happened. So right. I, I just wanted to see how you felt about that kind of stuff. I wasn't sure what your take on that stuff was. Cause I think people who have legitimate complaints and legitimate uh, research get heard in legitimate uh, 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 venues. That's true. Uh, that's they don't have true. to post videos on YouTube. No, they don't They don't have to. Well, it's not just on YouTube. It was actually, I heard about this documentary. Somebody had handed me a, a CD a long time ago. Where's Michael Moore? Ago. Where's uh, Morgan Spurlock? Where is a legitimate filmmaker? Somebody with a background. Somebody we've heard of. Somebody, I think they just want to stay away from it, to be honest with you. I, why would they want to do that? I, I, I don't know, because the uh, government might get pissed off at him or something. Michael Moore made Fahrenheit uh, 911. Yeah. Though. I so, think it well, was, so is the uh, so is a theory about whether or not the World Trade Center could melt. Well, yeah, it, I mean they they just use like a Newton's law of uh, free fall speed. Again, how each building don't fell you down think and, that you know. Michael Moore would have wanted to include that in his film? 
Yes. Buddy I Dickens. think you I think he would have and he probably should have but Buddy I mean, if you ever have an hour and a half to kill you should check it out. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't think I'll be killing an hour and a half anytime soon but thank you. It's David on the Tom Like show. Hello. Hey Tom, I just wanted to get your opinion on uh Kurt Warner. I know uh you used to bash him because he was a born in Christian and he used to say he was washed up. He spent all those years in New York and in Arizona. What what is your opinion of him now? What do you think about his success? What do I think about his success? Oh, I think the Lord just reached out and said, you know, it's time for you to win another Super Bowl. You know, everybody's going to be tired of hearing this, but I never get tired of saying it. There's one reason that I'm standing up on this stage today. That's because of my Lord up above. I got to say thanks to Jesus. You knew I was going to do it, but I got to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Joe. Oh, dang, oh, what a retard. Hey, third-time caller, long-time <laughs> listener. I had a question. Who do you got on the Pacquiao-Hatton fight, and who do you think deserves the bigger cut? Well, Pacquiao will get the bigger cut uh, because he's the champion. Let's start with that. That's been determined already. Mm -hmm. He deserves it because he's the champion. Right. Much the way Oscar De La Hoya got the uh, bigger cut in their fight. In fact, he got a much bigger percentage than Pacquiao was going to get in this fight. Now, how do you think he's going to stand against uh, Ricky Hatton since, you know, this is his only, sec his only second fight in this weight class? Uh, if I was at the last Pacquiao fight against De La Hoya. I'm telling you, this guy is a machine. Oh, yeah, I watched it on pay-per-view, and I mean, I couldn't believe it. Pacquiao uh, turned into a boxer puncher from just a straight baller, and man, his technique has just gotten so much better, but yeah. I'm, I'm not about to throw Hatton out of the fight just yet, because, you know, he's a... You know, he's the uh, same age as Pacquiao is, and he's a good hard hitter, too. But, yeah, you know, but, not... but Pacquiao has had some amazing success, uh, several fights in a row. I've seen his last four fights, the last one in person, the three previous on pay-per-view. And uh, I'm a big fan. I, I, right now, he can do no wrong, it seems. How, how likely do you think that uh, Mayweather is going to make a comeback to face either or? Uh, who knows? Uh, uh, you know, Clearly, uh, any time these guys can make a few more bucks, they do. Hmm. So uh, it's all a matter of whether a promoter wants to offer him the money. All right. Thanks a lot, Tom. Can you take me out tribal style? Yes. Yes, I can. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, 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 sopenza. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. Now we are heard six days a week. You'll hear us tomorrow from two until six p.m. That's right, our new Saturday show, two until six p.m. Every Saturday, as well as 3 to 8 p.m. Pacific time as you head home from work on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you can't hear our radio feed, just go to blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button. Don't forget, we're here tomorrow, 2 until 6 p.m. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephones. Mike of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Um, I'm really excited about the stadium that they're going to be putting in uh, the city of industry. I think it's going to be great for uh, Southern California um, and for football and also uh, other venues. I, I'm excited about it, too. I think it's fantastic, and I'm uh, all in favor. Um, I think it's great. I, I go to Cal State Fullerton, um, and they're looking to jump on board um, to help out and recreate their football program. They have a great baseball program, a decent basketball program, but they haven't had a football program for, I think, like 30 years. Um, so they're trying to get in on it um, with whoever's building the stadium, um, you know, share the cost and be able to host their games there. No, I think it's fantastic. So I'm all in favor. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm just hey. not in favor of paying my own tax money towards it. But uh, if private industry wants to do it, and if the city of industry, which I think has 80 registered voters, literally <laughs> 80, I'm, you're laughing. It's true. Oh, yeah. No, it, it wouldn't surprise me. 80. 
and it was I think they voted for the, uh, the for the bonds like seventy to one. Well, yeah, the city of Industry probably, in my my opinion, isn't the best location. But I was looking on a map. Um, I think it's a fantastic I location. I think it's a fantastic location. Let the oh, traffic yeah, be there. That'd be good too. And lots of freeways in the area. You're not far from the six hundred five. Yeah. You're not far from the seven ten, the exactly. fifty seven, the sixty. I mean, come on! I think it's a great location for a stadium. Well, yeah, the, for for a city, I I don't care for it, but a location, yeah, it's like thirty miles from everything. So, which which will help in the demographic because that's been the problem with keeping a football in LA is just you know when it's a slow year, no one shows up. So hopefully, it can bring a larger pool. A larger well, keep crowd. in mind, keep in mind, a big part of the group of supporters of the uh, uh, the uh, Raiders when they played in Southern California. Uh, were the Mexican American community, right? And let's face it, the 60 freeway is where many of them live. I think it's a fantastic place <laughs> to put a stadium. Just absolutely great. You're right. You're right. Hey, um, love you, Tom. Listen to you a lot. I got to say thanks for uh, your vigilantism when you uh, help uh, catch that murderer. You know what I'm talking about? No. Which murderer? You talking about? Call Ben. Yo, no. <laughs> To brag about it? Yes, okay. Yeah, well, no, thanks, you know, because you have so many people that are listening right now waiting to hate on you. Just like, hey, don't hate on him. This guy's helping right. America. He's helping California. He's helping, you know, the justice system. Right, so, for God's sake. And not I'm, only I'm, that, you're helping guys with your great advice. I appreciate it. I'm like it. the FBI, I, for God's sake. Yeah, you are. And that lady was retarded, so. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Luke on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tommy? Great. Hey, man, I've heard you say on the, uh, the show before that uh, you're close friends with Sean Hannity. I didn't, say I, I'm, like, I didn't say I'm close friends with Sean Hannity. I said that I'm friends with him and I've known him for a long time. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. But I just don't see how you could be friends. It seems like you guys are like complete different ends of the spectrum. I just don't see how. Well, because politics is not everything in, the, in life, you know? I mean, uh, I really don't care what his politics are. And I don't have friends based on what their politics are or, or aren't. Yeah. I mean, it Sean just, Hannity, just, I want to say something about Sean Hannity, the person. I mean, in my mind, he's somebody I trust personally, regardless of what you think of his politics. Uh, and I don't agree with his politics either, by the way. Uh, he knows fine wine. He's a good dinner uh, company, a good drinking companion. And, uh, you know, he's fun to talk to. And, we, uh, of course, we don't agree on stuff, and that's part of what makes it fun to talk to him. He's a good drink. Does he like the booze? He's a wine guy. No, he's a wine guy. He's okay. a wine guy. Okay, but even like politics aside, it seems like I mean he would be like so against everything that you preach. I don't. I don't well, see. But it the point just because he doesn't want to go out and bang every chick uh, in creation <laughs> doesn't mean. I mean, everybody I know is uh, is, is not a reprobate like myself. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. I, I mean, again, I, I completely disagree with Sean Hannity's opinions, especially his opinion that we're not in a recession. I mean, he's he's ludicrous for saying that. Ludicrous, but, yeah. But, uh, hey, uh, you know, whenever I'm in New York, I give Sean a call and uh, we try to get together. Yeah, that's good. I appreciate that. We need to start taking a couple more tips from you. That's all I think. There we go. Luke, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Scott on the Tom Like His Show. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I, I was driving home. I listen to your show a lot when I drive home, and uh, the topic came up about the football stadium that they're right. putting in the city of industry. And i got to tell you, you know, I live in the city of Diamond Bar, and I'm not too happy about the uh, football stadium being in the city of industry because it's uh, close to my home, and uh, I don't think it's going to – first of all, my city's not going to get any tax revenues from it. And uh, I just don't think... Well, it'll, it'll only get tax uh, revenues in, in as far as people get off the 57 freeway at Diamond Bar and and buy stuff. There's nothing in Diamond Bar for people to buy. It's well, not I guess you can pick up a sixer at the AM, PM. Come on, I, I've been to Diamond Bar. Yeah, there's no AM, PM in Diamond Bar. Uh, but I, I understand your point. But the thing that worries me the most is, you know, I'm not a big football fan. However, it's the quality. You know, these people, they go to the games, they get liquored up, and then they use the streets that I live on to drive home. And how safe is that going to be for my family? Well, uh, first of all, I, I can't speak for your family. I, me, I'm not out on freeways on Sunday anyway. So it's pretty much uh, these uh, maroons out there, uh, the, you know, driving all over each other. And, uh, uh, you know, let's face it, uh, for years I lived in L.A. when the Raiders played in the Coliseum. 
and I can see the Coliseum from my terrace in the distance. And, uh, you know, it's a problem for people who live right around the stadium, but uh, if you don't live right around the stadium, uh, the problem dissipates as it uh, moves uh, away from the actual location. Yeah, I, I just, you know, and I understand you, you make these, these are valid points. And I, I would rather live near a football stadium with 80,000 people uh, than to live near, for example, a NASCAR track with 110,000 or 150,000. The thing that, that I guess troubles me the most is that, uh, you know, and, and I hate to, to, to be so stereotypical, but it's the quality of people that go to these games. You know, it, it's they're not always family events, and, and these you know, these people, they get, they get drunk, they, they get on the roads, and they cause a lot of problems, and it's near my home. Well, again, uh, are you on the freeway every Sunday? I'm not on the freeway every Sunday, okay. no. Okay, this is eight Sundays a year. Yeah, I understand your point. So it's 357 days you'll be free of that every year. Well, but they, but they they no no we won't because there are plans to open up more than just the, the football stadium. It's supposed to be some athletic center and people do not people not get drunk to play sports. So, they get drunk to watch sports. Right. I guess he kind of disappeared into the ether there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. It's uh, every Friday. The whole show. Anything goes. And we take the call so much faster now. Even you can get in. 1-800-5-800-866. Don't forget our Saturday edition of the Tom Likas show. Tomorrow between 2 and 6 p.m. You wouldn't miss that, would you? Tomorrow between 2 and 6 p.m. The Tom Likas show. Now heard six days a week. So be here. Or else, it's the Tom Likas Show.